This is a recording of a few reflections upon the ruin of Cash by Roberto Calasso, just continuing throughout the book. Again, it's a reflection upon the time of the French Revolution and the onset of what we now recognize as the modern age. What I like about this book is that he provides a highly detailed analytical view of the last 200 years. He interweaves so many streams of thought, but he has an overall thesis into which he weaves these strands. It does require knowing some of the names that he refers to and so this book is also a very good history lesson for this period and important for us to understand the influences that have led us to where we are today. So I'll just read a few lines from one section called Eulogus, page 63, where he says, A Gnostic history which we lack is largely made up of antercines, as Massignon called them. Unusual warnings, coincidences, as historians call them, to avoid them. Erratic forms, buried relics, physiognomic marks, constellations latent in the sky of thought. That's a very beautiful few lines. And he's right. A Gnostic history which we lack. So the history that we read about in our books is a history of external events. I've noticed that Colasa reads Henri Corbin and in this book I also came across a narration from the Shi'i tradition which I will touch upon later. But this is one of the points that Colasso is making which is that with the onset of the Industrial Revolution and the secularization of society, an apprehension of the inner reality of things was lost. Maybe not lost totally, but certainly marginalized. marginalized and also falsified in some way. The spiritual traditions that we have in Europe today, I would argue, are not really authentically connected to their roots. They're kind of like a little bit of a superficial mishmash of different traditions. I would argue that the lineage has essentially been lost in Europe. People are clutching at straws, trying to dig around in different spiritual traditions to retrieve what has been lost. But as René Guénon said, Islam is really the only last continuous initiatory tradition that exists in some kind of authentic form today. And I like this line that Colasso says here, constellations latent in the sky of thought. That's very beautiful. He also mentions Louis Massignon, of course, the scholar of the Islamic spiritual tradition. And this word antercine or intersigns 
is referring to things that are a little bit hidden, in a way coded in the world around us, but we are not able to read them because we are schooled only to apprehend reality in a certain way. And then I'm just going to turn to page 68. So then he turns to uh, the important personalities of the Industrial Revolution after the French Revolution. And he refers to one personality whose name was Metternich. And that is Clemens von Metternich, who died in 1859. He was an Austrian minister and governed for about 33 years after the end of the Napoleonic Wars. Encyclopedia Britannica says that the 33 years after the end of the Napoleonic Wars are called in Austria, and to some extent in all of Europe, the age of Metternich. The chief characteristics of this age are the onset of the Industrial Revolution, an intensification of social problems brought on by economic cycles of boom and bust, an increasingly mobile population, more demands for popular participation in government, and the rising tide of nationalism all watched over by governments intent upon preserving the social, political and international status quo. Metternich was the symbol of those forces eager to preserve the status quo. In the debate about his policies, some have argued that Metternich was little more than an oppressive, reactionary but opportunistic statesman eager to snuff out sparks of revolution and liberalism wherever he could detect them. Moreover, his much vaunted direction of the other powers in preserving the European order was really a mask for maintaining Habsburg influence in international affairs, far out of proportion to the power that the monarchy actually possessed. Others contend that Metternich was one of the first philosophical conservatives basing his social and political policies on coherent principles of orderly and cautious change in the context of good government and his diplomatic policies on maintaining stability by convincing the great powers of their mutual interests in preserving the European order as it then existed. So this is Metternich, who Kalasa refers to, and he says... Metternich knows that with the greatest efficiency and the greatest economy of materials, he must run a drafty old house afflicted with rusting window frames and clogged pipes. So here we see the metaphor for the old order in Europe. Talleyrand had never identified himself with any house even when he wears his superb uniforms, a part of him is always on the high road, dressed in rags and playing in the fields, as his uncle once saw him doing as a child. He has never set foot in his father's house. There is something in him which is well hidden, but brings him closer to the dispossessed and the uprooted, which allows him to understand the new, the barbaric, from within and to invent shifting strategies so that in the violent course of events it may end up taking one direction rather than another. Metternich was the great curator of the Museum of Europe. Like every lucid conservative, he knew that his work could last only a certain time. Talleyrand, on the contrary, aims at survival moves from one temporary palace to another, regularly sees his books and precious objects sold at auction. He retains only his style, 
because he knows it is the only weapon for survival that can be trusted. Anyone who, in order to survive, succumbs to the moment and adopts its style will be killed by the moment that follows. Like a Taoist sage, Talleyrand is willing to admit that survival may be infinite. But if it is necessary to die, he knows he must accept this naturally. And even then he strives to hold on to his style for the last time. He died like someone who knows how to live, one lady remarked. It has always been a premise of Talleyrand's that the course of events is in itself murderous, that the whole art of politics is henceforth the art of surviving the grip of circumstances. Thus his work is more lasting than Metternich's. The legacy of the past is guaranteed not by its ability to be restored, but by its capacity to evade a condemnation already laid down, postponing death moment by moment. So again, Talleyrand has a style of operating in the world which is appropriate for this age of turmoil, an age which sees the disintegration of the old order and bringing in of an order of constant change, which is what Marshall Berman talks about in his book All That Is Solid Melts Into Air, that one of the characteristics of the modern age is this uprootedness, this endless need to adapt to constantly shifting circumstances. And this need to focus upon survival moment by moment. And I'm going to read one more quote from page 68, where Colasso quotes Jules Michelet, saying, What is history? Specification. The more history specifies, clarifies, characterizes, the more it is history, the more it is itself. Again, something worth reflecting upon. I remember when I started history classes many years ago for my A-levels, I think that was. And we had a discussion on what is history, specification, History is that which seeks to define something that is not easily definable. And then, of course, that leads to the discussion on who is doing the defining and why and the form in which events are defined as well. So these are a few of my thoughts and my reflections on this amazing book and I will be making more again shortly. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.